Hello, my name is Jasmine McDonald. Welcome to my YouTube channel. If you're new here, I post ballet and fitness related videos every single Tuesday, Thursday, and now Sunday. And if you're also new here, hello, you may as well hit subscribe. Today's video is a highly requested one and she asked if I could share some helpful tips, stretches, and exercises to improve your arches and your foot flexibility. I am so excited for this video because I have worked really hard on my foot flexibility and I have three stretches and three conditioning exercises for you guys. So make sure you're adequately hydrated because hydrated muscles are happy and healthy muscles and make sure you're warm before you try anything and check with your doctor, your physio, and your teacher before trying any exercise. So without further ado, let's get into it today. Now, first things first, I'll go through the equipment that is necessary. Foam roller. This one is going to be your best friend after ballet class. It's going to be your best friend before as well because you can roll out your muscles, keep them massaged instead of spending like $80 for a massage. This is the cheapest option for sure. So a foam roller you can definitely find at Walmart, $10 you can find on Amazon. I'll put some options down below. Next thing you'll need is a yoga block or if you don't have a yoga block, you can use your foam roller in the same sense, so yoga block's a great option. Lastly, one of these TheraBands. So again, like I mentioned before, I'll show three exercises and three stretches. So we're actually gonna be starting with stretches. So same thing, make sure you're hydrated and let's get started. First things first, we're going to just start simply sitting like this. Now, for those of you who maybe clicked on this video and aren't dancers, it's kind of weird to say we want better feet, right? What does better feet mean? Better feet means that your arch is higher, your toes almost touch the floor if you were sitting on your rear, <laughs> and you point your toes. So the idea of having better feet completes the line, it makes you look longer, taller, it allows you to go up easier in point shoes. It's really very interesting if you're not a dancer. For dancers, we always say, I want better feet, and that's kind of a weird thing to say, but I thought I'd mention that in case you clicked on this video. The first things first, what you wanna do is just start simply sitting on your shins. Next thing, if this is already a stretch for you, just stay here for a moment because just using gravity in this sense will allow you to find more mobility in your ankle. Now, some people find this uncomfortable and cannot get past this point. So this is the very first stretch I would start with if you are a beginner and you do not feel comfortable in this position. Another disclaimer, make sure that your arch is always in line with your toes. And by that, I mean your toes aren't going inwards and they're not going outwards. You wanna make sure that your toes are right in line with your arch. If you were to look straight onto it, your middle toe and your second toe and your big toe are all in line with your shin and your arch and your knee. So when you're sitting here, make sure your toes aren't knocking, your ankles aren't out, make sure they're straight. So just sitting here for a moment, if this is way too easy, you can go ahead and grab the back of your toes. As you can see here, the back of my toes are being pointed upwards and you can just gently pull on them to warm them up. You can even stretch forward in this. If this is too easy, you can grab a TheraBand as well wrap it around your toes and bend forward. But if this is enough, just stay here and just pull them a little bit closer, but very gently. This is probably the easiest stretch to do, so we're starting with this one. So an example with the TheraBand is I would pull it with my biceps to my ears and pull forward, just relaxing. You can see my toes are pointing upwards a bit more now, and I'm actually stretching my arch. So I wanna make sure that the TheraBand is on my toe joints rather than my toe knuckles. So, sorry, not my toe joints, it's below my toe knuckles. So it's actually on my arch, so it's pulling my arch up rather than my toes. I would always recommend after finishing this stretch to counter stretch your ankles because when you're sitting here, your ankles are being a little bit squished and we want to stretch them out to make sure they're happy and healthy as well. So get ready, go on all fours, tuck your toes under, send your hips halfway up. You can walk your hands towards your feet and just massage the back of your ankles here. Make sure that they're staying nice and healthy and keep your knees pretty bent so you feel a nice deep stretch behind your ankle. You can also send your feet back into a downward facing dog. Now for the next stretch here, we're gonna keep our hands and our feet in a downward facing dog. We're gonna bend our knees here, keeping our heels down so you feel a nice deep stretch behind your ankle. And now when you stretch your knees, I want you to lift your heels up and down, and up and down. So this, we're just finding a nice deep stretch underneath our toes so that you're flexing your toes up because this is also integral in our foot training for ballet. A lot of the times ballerinas are standing either on their tippy toes 
or on their demi point. So it's really important to have a lot of flexion in your toe joints. So we're just going to stay a moment here, flexing our toes up. Next stretch, you're actually going to keep your heels high and bend your knees, keeping your arches over top of your toes and feel an even deeper stretch in your toe joints. And don't stay for too long there. Stretch it out afterwards, maybe pedal out your feet. You can even go into a full forward fold and bend your knees so you can stretch the back of your ankles again. Good. Another nice one to do here is when you go down all the way, instead of tuck, untucking your toes, keep your toes tucked and just shift forward. I feel a huge stretch here because I don't have as much flexibility in my toe joints in terms of flexion. I have a lot of flexibility opposite way when they point downwards. When I flex them up, I don't have as much. So this is a really good stretch for those of you who find you're really flexible in your toes down, but not up. Same thing here. Don't spend too much time here in this county stretch afterwards. Be really nice and easy. Next stretch, we will be using our foam roller. We're going to tuck it underneath our bottom and underneath our hamstrings instead. Starting on our calves, you should feel this as more of a massage in your calves, and I would actually start your warm-up like this, and you just move your roller up and down. It's like a nice little massage, gets those muscles ready to work without um, totally relaxing them, like going to massage without feeling good. Like, and you just want to sleep. This just kind of wakes them up, especially for the classes up early in the morning. I always start my day on the foam roller before class like this, just massaging up and down along my calf. Another thing about ballerinas is, like I mentioned before, you're standing a lot on your demi point. So when you're doing that, you're engaging your calf muscles. They can become quite tense. So this is a really good way to make sure that it's not staying too tense, that when you could do your plie, you can actually keep your heels down and get a deeper plie. And for those of you who don't know, plie is when you're in first position and bend your knees. You need that to jump, you need that to turn, you need that to pretty much do everything. You need it for point work. Good. Okay, so next one, taking a foam roller as well underneath our toes. You can also use a yoga block here. We're gonna take it underneath our toes. Same idea with the yoga band. So this is pretty much the same stretch, just a little bit more passive and you can just sit here and let your ankles fall down to the floor. Again, keeping it underneath your arch and above your toe joints. So if this were my foot, I'm keeping it above here, not on my toe joints. And as you can see, my arch is falling lower and I'm feeling a nice deep stretch on the top of my ankles. And for stretches, you generally want to hold them for 30 to 60 seconds, no longer. And if it's really uncomfortable for you, feel free to come out of it, counter stretch for a second, and then go back to it, maybe in increments of 10, Seconds stretching, five seconds off. Play around with that, but don't go over 60 seconds per day. Good. Like I mentioned before as well, you can also use the roller in the same idea, putting it underneath your toes. If you do not have a yoga block, just pretty much any surface that's elevated. Next one, earlier I mentioned how you're doing a little calf massage. You can actually just do foam roller on your calves like this beforehand as well. But we're going to be needing this TheraBand for the very last stretch today. We're going to actually put it on top of our toes. Usually when you use your TheraBand for conditioning, you put it underneath like this. I'm gonna put it on top. So I'm just gonna do one foot at a time. I'm gonna put it on top of my toes like this. When I pull my TheraBand with one hand, I wanna make sure it's going outwards because we want our foot never to sickle. And by sickling, I mean our toes going towards the midline of our body inverting. We want, if anything, for them to go outwards when it's in the air. Never standing, never stand on a winged foot, never do a tondu with a winged foot, but definitely in the air. You can use a winged foot if you're advanced, if you're not. Keep it pretty straight, but you're gonna pull it underneath your heel on the outside. So you see that line that it makes? Now, you can either stay like this, if this is already enough of a stretch, and just pull with the TheraBand. So you see, again, it's over top of my arch, rather than just my toes, because if it were just my toes, they'd be crunching down. You never wanna crunch your toes, you wanna keep them long. Now you can either stay like that, or you can put the TheraBand underneath the foam roller, put the foam roller underneath your calf and you're just gonna stretch your knee on the foam roller. Depending on your level, you can keep it closer to your ankle. Some people find that pretty uncomfortable. Some people find it's fine. Also make sure it's not just on your toe joints like mine. 
So this is pretty much the setup, same thing here. Um, I know it's pulling down my toes a lot, but I'm also making sure it's on the midline of my foot and it's pulling down my arch as well. Be pretty gentle in this one, take a lot of breaks and increments bending and stretching your knee. Just play around with the different levels. If you're more advanced, the higher it goes because the further and the more tension there is between your heel and the corner of the band that's being smushed by the foam roller. So this is actually a similar setup to those foot stretchers that you see, but way less expensive than buying one of those foot stretchers that you see that are made of wood and have the exact same setup. The very last stretch, if you don't have any of this equipment, this is very, very old fashioned. This is what I did because I did not have this equipment growing up. Find a couch and put the same idea underneath or above, sorry, above your toe joint. So about this part of my sock where I have that band on my sock underneath your couch and start pretty close to your couch. You can also use a friend. If you don't have a couch, they can push on that part and you're going to inch your bottom away until you can't anymore. So until the point where your toes cannot leave, you're going to stay there and then you can start to slide it away, keeping the couch no lower than your toe joint. So not crunching our toes down like this. I will show with the couch in a B-roll as well. Now I'll be showing you three key exercises to maintain strength after you stretch your ankles and your feet. First one's with the TheraBand and there's three variations to this one so it's actually six exercises in total. A little bit of a bonus. First things first on the TheraBand when you put it on the reverse rather than the top of your foot you want to be sure that it's mirroring where you put it before. So pulling the TheraBand taut, making sure your toes are in line with your knee and your hip, you're going to go through your demi point and flex. That's the first exercise. I would recommend starting with 12, working your way up to 16, then working your way up to 30. That's the maximum I would get to. So just flex to demi point. Once you're comfortable with that, if you do increments of 10 or 12, you're going to do the same amount from demi point to point, keeping your toes straight. Notice my toes aren't curling. I'm keeping my toes straight in this exercise. So again, fixing that, demi point to point, about 10 or 12 times. Once you're done with that one, you're gonna put them all together nice and slow in increments demi point to point, demi point and flex. Also 10 to 30 times. So again, the first one, flex to demi, flex to demi, let's say 10 times, then demi point to point, demi point to point, 10 times, and then flex to demi point, point to demi point, flex to demi point, demi point, point to demi point. That is the first set of exercise I would highly recommend for you to start um, working on with a TheraBand to strengthen your toes and your arch. Next exercise is going to be with our block. So if you do not have a block, you can use a book. And I'm sure most of you have a book at home. Hanging onto a wall or something supportive, maybe the bar, you're going to let your heels go down all the way. Now from here, you're going to do regular rises going all the way up to demi point and all the way down the goal, again, is to get about 30 of these rises, elevated rises, on the yoga block. Once you can do that, you're going to do one foot, the exact same thing, maybe doing half, 15, and then you're going to do the other foot, the exact same thing, 15 rises. Make sure your heel goes down every time, and as you go up, you're making sure your ankle isn't going inwards or outwards. So that is the next set of exercises, elevated rises on the block. Once you are done with that, very last ankle stability exercise, be simply balancing, holding your balance for at least a minute on your demi point to make sure your ankle stable. Once you've mastered that, you're going to bend. This is never a movement you do in classical ballet class, but you can do it in conditioning. You're going to bend your knee and stretch and keep bending your knee about 10 to 12 times and stretch, keeping your arch exactly where it is. So I'm not going over, I'm keeping it exactly where it is. So I'm strengthening, mobilizing, and conditioning my ankle for stability. So I hope all of these exercises helped and stretches helped. Let me know in the comments down below if you try any of these and if you'd like me to do an actual video guiding you through all of these. Thank you again so much for watching. I hope you have a great rest of your day. Stay safe and happy dancing. Bye now.